He was entrusted with maintaining security along the U.S.-Mexico border, but has been charged in the brutal killing of four women. Former Border Patrol agent Juan David Ortiz's trial was moved from Laredo to San Antonio by request. The change of venue has given KSAT the opportunity to provide gavel-to-gavel -gavel coverage of the trial of the so-called Border Patrol serial killer. Erica Hernandez covers the courts for us and joins us to talk more about the trial so far, including some observations she hasn't shared in her stories just yet. Good morning, Erica. Hey, good morning, RJ and Tiffany. So, Erica, let's start here. First, we know the background of the case, but has there been any motive that's been discussed so far? Yeah, we heard some of that motive being talked about during opening statement on Monday, and the district attorney from Webb County, who is the lead prosecutor in this case, said during an interrogation of Juan David Ortiz back in 2018, when he claimed to have admitted to these murders, he also said he did this because he wanted to clean the streets of Laredo. So that seems to be the motive he said at the time. Whether there's anything else that was discussed, um, we have yet to see that interrogation video, but at some point it will be shown to the jury. What is the defense focusing on during cross-examination of some of the witnesses that have taken the stand? So we kind of got an idea of what they're going to attack on the prosecution's case, and that is the chain of command when it came to searching and gathering of evidence. The investigation part of it will be kind of looked at and, and really will be, they'll be focusing on asking questions, especially about a search warrant and if there was one obtained um, for searching or if his truck the night that he was arrested. Apparently there wasn't a search warrant, but the state was saying at one point that as soon as he fled the scene, he abandoned his truck, which gave them the right to search it because he had abandoned his belongings. So we'll kind of see where they go back and forth. And also they were questioning the credibility of the main witness, which is Erica Pena, who is the alleged surviving victim. Yeah, a lot of information so far, including some crime scene photos that were shown late yesterday afternoon, Erica. We didn't show them because they're graphic in nature, but was there any evidence found at those scenes? Yeah, there was shell casings that ended up matching a gun that was found in his vehicle that were found at the crime scene, as well as tire tracks. So those they were able to cast those tire tracks, and they did bring in the tire yesterday. They haven't shown it officially to the jury, but they did bring in the tire so they can show the, the tire from his truck matching those tracks and that cast that was made at the scene of some of these crimes. Remember, there are four crime scenes. In this case, there were four individuals, four women who were murdered. So there's a lot of details coming out in this case. I wish we could share more with you guys because there's so much. But I'm hoping this gives our viewers a little more background on what's going on and, and what why these witnesses have taken the stand and what the defense is kind of doing during cross-examination. A lot to cover. And finally, Erica, give us an idea of just how big this trial is. Yeah, there's, this is not only just something big here locally and for South Texas, but it's big on the national level. There are several national media outlets, including Court TV, HBO, uh, Netflix, USA Today, Law and Court TV, all involved in showing this, this trial as well and covering this trial. And right now in the hall room, in a hallway right outside the courtroom. So there's a lot of people here. It's packed in the courtroom along with the victim family. There's a lot of media here. But, you know, we're here as well covering it, and you can watch our live stream as well. Well, you're doing an incredible job. Eric. Yeah, absolutely, including uh, also our photojournalist, Misael Gomez, also did an incredible job covering this very, very high-profile case. Thank you very much, Erica, and we continue to look Thanks, forward RJ, to your updates throughout the day. Keep up to date with all of San Antonio's top news, weather, and so much more by clicking the like and subscribe buttons below. And once again, thanks for watching KSAT.